Iraq, I want to apologize. I want to apologize on behalf of the United States for the way it has conducted itself in consideration of matters related to the nation of Iraq, and especially recently. I cannot at this time access documents from uh, official Iraqi websites uh, concerning the Constitution of Iraq. So I cannot uh, confirm via access to constitutional documents that the uh, Presidency Council, which has a sort of tripartite type of presidential structure, um, i.e. that there are three uh, executives that are supposed to coordinate together in order to uh, wield effective leadership in the constitutional structure of Iraq, is accurate or if it's some sort of overwriting that is being attempted at this moment to effectuate a uh, uh, ulterior agenda. But um, by virtue of the fact that something is saying I'm banned from accessing those documents on the ministry website, I believe that this is an intercession being provided in the United States to try to teach me a lesson because at some point they decided to characterize me as the Iraq bond woman. See, there's this game that they play in Texas. I actually think it's kind of a virtual reality game or a sort of uh, hack game that certain kinds of veterans are enabled to play through their small business operations where for some reason they're allowed to access private personal information about women specifically and subject them to these kinds of torments where everything the woman's doing is bonding something. In reality, I think a lot of what it is is that Texas used to have these laws that said that you're, if you were from out of state and you came to Texas, your first year in Texas was to provide some sort of bonded service. Now, I haven't found anything recently. These books where this was uh, uh, recounted were old, old books. These were from right after the time the uh, state of Texas had a major overhaul of its insurance commission. Uh, but it was on the book to say this. Um, and I haven't found any evidence that it's been retracted. So I think that without letting people know that when you come to Texas, they require you to have some form of bonded service um, while you're here. And what that bond c could mean, how that bond actually takes place, could mean a different uh, variety of different things. If you get arrested and you have to get a bail bond, that could be a bond. But it could also mean that if you go and you report crime, and you agree to participate in an investigation, that's another kind of bond. So who has the leverage to characterize how people are bonded to Texas? And what I've experienced is uh, in being here over three years, it's not enough if you know about that and are willing to engage a relationship. They'll just traffic your ass to another city or give you another address after they dump you so that they can hook you up with another bond if you didn't play the game. And the Iraq bond woman, there's actually a website it's called the Iraqi bond woman, and it is supposed to be uh, information about dinar auctions in Iraq. But I actually think that it is a digital interface that creates transactional accountings that are used to literally torment people and launder um, money and other assets through them. And I think that people in Texas have been using it as a kind of virtual reality sort of gamesmanship, and it has literal consequences in Iraq as well as in the United States. As a matter of fact, I had believed at some point in time that part of what was going on in Chicago with the escalations in reported uh, shootings of people by police, particularly African-American people, had something to do with the bonds, that there was a way that people, when they get arrested, get bonded, there were, and I knew about that, and I also knew that first responder police have bonds themselves um, in some manner, way, or shape, or form, and that the financial relationship between the police officer and the municipality somehow was connected to larger financial regimes of municipal bonds, and I didn't know what or how, but at the time, I absolutely believed that the increase in the number of people that were being reported uh, to have been shot by cops, especially in racialized incidents, was somehow triggered in connection with transactional processes that correlated with municipal bond issues and the way that other uh, local municipal instrumentalities were connected to them. And that a lot of them were premeditated and orchestrated and that there had actually been processes of experimentation on the effectiveness of these bonds that were alleged to be part of national security paradigms. 
and that, in fact, a big deal of the sweeps of immigrants that happened in 2008 um, and later were about testing. You know, there was a time where if you were involved with people that were being impacted by the sweeps and the, uh, you know, the incur the uh, uh, approaches that uh, the United States had to immigrants domestically in the United States, specifically from south of the U.S.-Mexico border, um, you would find that a lot of people would complain about how it was mistaken identity. Uh, so they had the same name as somebody else, but uh, it wasn't them. Or they came to their address with that name, but they were actually looking for somebody at another address. And this would happen with very significant kind of frequency. And what I saw, and I believe, is that there were actually individuals who may even have been in the country legitimately, but had done something to raise the ire of somebody. So as political leverage, they were mischaracterized as being an immigration problem. Because even if it was determined that they were innocent, they had to go through the process of engaging the system, which oftentimes meant being detained and having to have a bond in order to be released. So even if they determined that you were innocent, they had already taken the bond out on you. And even if something ended up paying it back or you ended up not having to follow through on certain uh, financial obligations, there were other obligations you did have and you had that number on you. And I literally believe that they were intentionally targeting certain people for political reasons. Um, and that part of what that had to do with somehow was connected to the bond. And that somehow the allegations that the police were disproportionately targeting people of color, especially in racialized situations in various municipalities, could be understood if somehow the people would, the people would be more forthcoming about the city's municipal financial situation. And at some point, I actually came to believe that it was connected to Iraq. And I couldn't figure out how, and I didn't know how until I started hearing about and learning about the dinar auctions and about how um, there are these auctions through the Central Bank of Iraq. And the question then became one of, well, are people accessing the dinar auctions through the Central Bank of Iraq in order to have access to a high risk, unmonitored, unverifiable currency so that they can launder money for organized crime syndicates, including ones in the United States, that try to leverage contracts or uh, development assistance awards uh, for people that are actually doing work in Iraq with local organized uh, criminal activity. And I bring this up right now because I have already gone on the record as saying that I believe that uh, what is going on right now is not a health pandemic. I believe it is a global bioterror attack. And I think it's been orchestrated for several years and there are various levels of complicity in various nation states around the, the world who or whatever decided that they were going to leverage biological weapons on their own country is beyond me. I can't even get anybody to respond to anything thus far. But I'm concerned that there was an executive order specifically about what is alleged to be the global health security agenda. And I've noticed ever since the first time I read it that it is alarming to me that in all of the delegations and designations of roles, alleged health security roles that are presented in here, there is a very unique kind of ratio with the Health and Human Services Administration. And if you're talking about providing patient care, and if you're talking about coming at it from a perspective of actually dealing with it from uh, health-related matters, it doesn't make much sense, operationally speaking. But when I first read it, it, it seemed to imply a situation whereby proxy scenarios could be created and implemented in a manner that posited the person receiving treatment as if they were a traitor. And so unlike in other kinds of designations of meetings or assignments of roles where there are other kinds of ratios and other kinds of manners in which it's calibrated, when it came to the health and human services specifically, it was as if you had two witnesses to you committing treason if you were to do that, if you were to do it under that rubric. That was what I understood the underwriting was. But it also meant that if somebody was trying to entice you into agreeing to commit illegal activity, then there were two people there to say you were the criminal, which is different than saying in a one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, I didn't agree to that. I didn't say that. They're actually misrepresenting that. 
See, in that situation, they might have the authority, especially if you've been alleged to have a mental illness. And so it's your word against theirs. But if you're truly revealing something dangerous, or if you might be a threat to society, in this particular health security agenda, you have two witnesses. But what if we're talking about something where, as they like to do in the United States, this model of being a uh, consumer provider, the understanding that you get sick, they treat you, and then after you've been treated because you've been a consumer, then you are put through a process where you can become an administrator. What happens if that two and one has to be three working together? And I've seen this two and one dynamic, the breaking of the triangle in very strategic manners. And I believe that it's actually done intentionally to try to sabotage or co-opt other kinds of functionalities that are supposed to have some sort of tripartite structure. And I'm wondering if this might actually be exactly what I think it is in some regard, that on some level, that there was this leveraging that happened in the relationship of the past administration in consideration of the uh, highest level of governance in the nation of Iraq in order to continue perpetuating uh, various kinds of sabotage of the Iraqi national economy in order to be leveraged domestically. And if one thinks about it from that perspective, then it would seem to be successful right now. My understanding is last time they reported there's over 600 cities in 50 states with protesters in the streets. And I think the major political demand is defund the police. True, a lot of money goes into police. A lot of uh, resources go into police pension funds. But to what aim? What else is there it's, uh, as, as an uh, alternative? Because what happens if you're the consumer of police services and then it becomes your time to participate in the administration?